this is, this is, this is. Yeah, those those videos you were putting up over the quarantine were awesome, man. Like that, like however you, you like film those, or like I, I'm not sure, yeah. I, like like just like that's your house, I guess. That's where you're jamming. Oh, that's the, that's a studio. Yeah, that's our oh, studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sick, man. It looks nice in there. Thanks. Yeah, that's all. That was all live. We just really? we did it all always live. Yeah, so that's why it kind of just looks so real or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all yeah. just one thing. It sounded yeah. sick though, too, man. It sounded awesome. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we have a studio there, and we just kind of had we had a mix running upstairs where the control room is through our Soundcraft console, and then back down, you know, through a compressor bus, you know, stereo bus compressor down. Yeah, yeah it was pretty cool. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, man. I, I like that's like one of those things that kind of. Are we doing this thing right now? Is it on? Uh, I mean, it's I'm recording, yeah. but yeah, oh, okay, I usually cool, yeah. kind of okay. start at you know whatever point makes yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, it's it, like I just thought that sounded awesome, and it's like kind of inspired like. When uh, Creep Show, we were working on some stuff. Same with the other band, Rules that I'm playing. Um, we started doing. I was like, man, we got to do something like that. Like, kind of just when you when you had your videos up. So yeah. We're just trying to like figure out a way to do that. And we had like one of those 360 cams, uh, and we just put that in the middle of the room, kind of thing. But like, it was it didn't sound half as good as that. <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah. You know, we yeah. had we had a you know we had a totally different like mix that we sound checked over and over you know a bunch of times and would tweak when oh things are a little weird let's tweak it you know and yeah so i mean it was like a as real of a mix as we could do without fake you know nothing was fake it was all just trying to make what we were playing sound good you know yeah a little bit of eq and compression and stuff like that but but that's the studio you guys record out of as well yeah yeah we've been doing the last couple records there um really you know i've had that place since 2000 2007 i bought the place and then 2008 was sort of like the first recording sessions that we started so oh, cool. mxpx uh plans within plans which was 2014 and on pretty much that on everything yeah. we've done has been at that place and then uh, my other band tumble down which I wanted yeah. to bring up anyway because the creep show. I feel like, man, we if we ever have a chance to come back and play more shows because we don't sure. really play anymore, but we're technically still together. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would love to play with you guys because I just love the riffs you do, dude. Like yeah. on guitar oh, thanks, and just. <laughs> it, I was I was a big fan of your stuff, that, like that uh, the tumble down stuff. I, I heard it actually. I think it was Sean. Um, it was Sean that plays yeah. in, in Creep Show. He's like, "Yo, check this out!" And like, because he like. We've been fans of that stuff from like you know forever, and then it, uh, but just MXPX. But then he's like, you got to check out his uh, solo stuff, and like and that was because I was doing a lot of solo stuff as well. It was just like Chuck Cole's United Snakes. That mm -hmm. was kind of the like the other thing I was working on, and that was like before I started playing with Creep Show, and he was like showing me that stuff, and I was like, dude, this is this is it, you know, like that, like I, it was such a like a different departure from what you're doing, but it's still like songwriting is fucking on point, dude. It's uh, it was nice, man. It was really good. Thank you. Dude, I gotta say, your voice, your songs, bravo! Like you have oh, thanks, man. your own style, and I really love it. Really, want oh, thanks that. a lot, man. I appreciate yeah. it. I, I got a, I, I got a chance to do some pretty cool things over top, like over the beginning of the quarantine, just to to reach out to different artists that have, like that was kind of a, um, like with the United Snakes stuff. That was always something like trying to work with different people from all over the place from from touring all the time, and seeing if I could come up with, uh, you know, like having a song here with. You know, just different features kind of thing. And then uh, we did the uh, Thank You by Descendants. That was like Brian from Wilhelm Scream, Pete from The Bouncing Souls, and um, uh, Flatliners, Paul. from The Flatliners, we did that song. And it's, uh, it, was, it was awesome. Like, it's just these little things to, you know, work with different people over it. But it, it kind of gave me, like, uh, some confidence to keep doing some stuff. You know what I mean? Like, it got, it got kind of dark there for a bit. You know, I'm sure for everybody, yeah. but it was like, it was a cool just to, just to be a singer in a band, you know what I mean? Before I was kind of just doing like, just, you know, singer songwriter stuff, but, uh, it just where I'm just singing and it, it made me feel kind of cool, you know, to be able to do that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the compliment though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think I'm, I might've missed that because I really, obviously I love that song. Thank you. But yeah. I it's, I, I want to check that out. Is it on your YouTube or on the United yeah, Snakes yeah. YouTube or? I think it would be, it's it'd just be under, uh. I think it's yeah. If I think if you just typed in like any one of our names and just like thank you cover, it would come up. Um, but you, like it was, we did that for the frontline work, like just like the frontline workers right at the beginning of that. Like uh, Brian and I were talking about it, being like we should do something for you know we we have like a lot of friends in that field, uh, and just being like just 
you know, thank you, you know, kind of just, it, it just seemed fitting, but it, uh, it turned out great. And it's like, and seeing how like other people have been trying to, uh, to work with different artists that way, it's been kind of cool to be able to, you know, work on stuff like that before you just always get together. You know what I mean? But yeah, that, try, trying to do it like, you know, I, I'm not that savvy on this dude that I, that I figured this out this fucking quick. Unreal. Like that, like the Skype thing. <laughs> like, yeah. I like how quite, I like, I, I'm so bad at this shit. So I'm like, you're like, I went through it. I, it's, it's, uh, it's, I'm I'm happy about it. I'm very pr- proud of myself. It's good. Moment. You did well. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> but uh, but you know, just just the collaboration thing. You, you know, you're doing something that I think a lot of hip hop artists have been doing a long time, and now you see punk bands. And and we've done it a little bit here and there, not nearly as much as I want to. So I, I loved seeing, I love seeing that you're you've been doing it and you're still doing it. So what do you see? What do you see like in the future? Are you going to do more United? St- more United Snakes stuff, or are you on to a new project? I'm on, I'm on a di- different pro. I, I, I've I kind of I think the ADHD thing. It's like I'm always fucking <laughs> yeah. like I'm, I've got some other project going, or you know, so like, and it's it's like a real. It's an it's actually a problem sometimes. Like I'll start something and I get stoked on that, and I like you know, it's not like if as long as uh, like Creepshow's not active at the moment because of uh, Kenda, our singer. She's uh, she's pregnant, so like we to make sure that the family's like mm-hmm. healthy and and the sure. baby's healthy and stuff like that, and then we can try to get back to work. But um, because of that, the, all the downtime, it's like fuck. I've started so many different projects and different different, you know, it's just some acoustic stuff or whatever. But mm-hmm. uh, how I, many? I, I, sorry, sorry to yeah. interrupt, but how many babies were conceived slash born during the pandemic? <laughs> I mean, yeah, like... I know. yeah, dude, it's, it's pretty it's pretty gnarly. Like I, I wonder, I I'm, I I think I'm I'm good. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, you but, never yeah, know, right? Yeah, I know. You, yeah, it's like it's it's over now. But I don't know. It's it, hopefully like you know, it's it's such a weird it's a weird time for everybody. But trying to make sure that we get back on track and make sure everything is is good. But it's also given me so much time to. I'm never. I'm always working on something. Like even with the creep show stuff, I'd come home from tour and I would, I would go and work on this this band Rules. It's called Rules. It's a it's like a hardcore kind of psychedelic punk band. Uh, and that record came out during the pandemic as well. And we mixed it during that too. Uh, but those were, those were things like in between tours, I would just chip away at songs and stuff like that. And then eventually it, it turned into squeaky. Oh, that's my cat. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I chip away at these songs and it, it, the record turned out great. But as soon as that was done, then I moved on to like doing some more organ thief stuff mm. with, uh, with Dave, uh, Dave Bash. And I think that's when we, that's when we met, I think out in, in Montreal. That was the Organ Thieves, and you were doing a solo show. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, right. and uh, was that? Uh, um, but the, it was uh, p- music, music for cancer. Music for like cancer. The very yeah. beginnings of it, like when it was before it was like a regular festival. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that's yeah. So Dave and I have been like we were talking about doing some other songs and stuff, uh, but he's like like you know with him so busy with some too like some forty ones back doing uh, you know constant touring and stuff like that. Uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, we're just like trying to work on different songs when we can. And it's, it's just, it's weird how it opens up. There's so many different avenues to, you know, to be creative, especially like, you know, like this, like the way we're talking, like we could be working on the song, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to like, I, I need to focus on like one thing for like for the next year. And I'm just trying to figure out what that is. I've, I've got like a, a few, few ideas and a few different songs. I've just got, I mean, I've got my hands in so many different things, like different styles of music as well. I've been doing a lot of like reggae music and like producing bands. Uh, I've been doing like uh, I've been like session work for reggae for like since I was a kid. Wow! So, so do you I, jump around from like say if you're working on a reggae thing? Do you are you also working on other stuff throughout the week, or are you just working on the reggae thing until it's done and then you move on to like how, I, I, how does your workflow happen? I try to I try my best to do to like I'll, I'll like say if it, if i'm working with like a band i will give them all my attention if it's my own thing i can just jump around okay but if it's if i'm if i'm working with this guy named john craig sifton and the all hell uh and i i just finished four no eight of their songs uh and that's something that i'm like i'm so stoked on so good um and i, I was pretty much in the band as well like helping them write but I put all my effort into that. Like when I have their time, I kind of make sure that, that I, they have mine, you know, like make sure that I have everything I can give them mm-hmm. uh, in the limited time that we do have to work. So it's uh, it, it turned out great, though. But you, you know what I mean? It's like if you're working on something, you want to make sure that you're, you're present, you know, but with, with my own stuff, I just like tend to jump around to whatever's there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. when it's someone else, I just make sure that I'm there. But, smart, smart. Yeah, man. 
So but yeah, I'm like super busy. You know, you know a lot of people, you know, in the punk scene, in especially in Toronto. Uh, like it's crazy. So I just, are you still in Toronto? By the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, how? So I guess my question is, how did you get into punk, and how did you find yourself in playing in the Creep Show, which you sound awesome in, even though you're the new guy. Am I right? Yeah, I am. Yeah. But you sound like you should have been there the whole time you know what i mean uh, so yeah thanks man that's nice yeah um the uh getting into punk rock was oh yeah cause i was i was always into like like it's like when i was really young was like hip-hop and like you know and like reggae kind of stuff uh and then i think it was like a uh a, a babysitter thing i it must have been like never mind the bullocks or something the sex pistols or something mm. and then trying to like learn that and again there was like an older there was this older girl that lived on our street like she was she was a punk rocker and she just looked cool as fuck. And I was like, I just want to know what that's about. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and yeah. She was, she was super hot too. I was like, oh shit. Was, Isn't it was weird how bad. like some some dudes are like, that's hot, and then other dudes are like, ew. You know, yeah. like, do you just have a different aesthetic <laughs> yeah, yeah. vibe and, yeah, and yeah. attraction? But and it was just like, and you, you kind of felt like, you know, I, I kind of felt like I just there's something about it that's like the freedom of just being who you are. You know, like there's mm-hmm. like. I'm just drawn to this, like, whoa, like, there's other, there's just different people on this planet, you know what I mean? And just different, like, different vibes and different, uh, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Did you, you ever, I mean? did you ever want to be, before you were doing music, kind of just as your main life gig, right? Like, that's what I call it, yeah. life gig. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was there ever, like, I want to be a pro basketball player or I want to be an astronaut? Like, anything oh, you yeah, can think of? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, I well, definitely wanted to, like, be, like, a professional goalie, like a hockey goalie when I was a kid. Okay, that, did you play? I, did you play hockey as a kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played hockey when I was. Yeah, that's like was, part yeah. of the the law that's like in Canada. In right? Canada, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you, yeah, it's like that and puberty are guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, like yeah, like and th- th- that was something you know. But then like skateboarding when you're a kid too, and you know what? The, I think mm-hmm. skateboarding is something too. Like uh, there was like Hogtown in Toronto, and I remember going to Buffalo with my my old man to get a skateboard. And, you know, and then you'd go, you'd flick through that stuff and then you, you know, you'd see just different bands and, you know, I, th- I think it had some, a lot to do with it too. It's like, it's hard to pinpoint it, but I, I know that that had something like, like Thrasher magazine had something was a huge part of that, you know? Yeah. And I, I think it is for everybody I know, you know what I mean? Regardless if they even know it, you know what I mean? It's just in the back of your, you know, in your subconscious or something, it's just always there. If you were into skateboarding, you know, but mm-hmm. like we were all into that. Um, Man, it's so much easier it's it's so much harder than it looks it's it's easier to just watch it and i remember like you know i would watch a lot of people at the skate park and i was a little kid and i joined this i like signed up for this contest it was like a rodney mullins was there awesome. um to do like the you know the demonstration and, and all that but then it was just like skate ramps and stuff and i was just so I was a beginner. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Yeah. But I signed up for this contest and I'm just going and I just I tried to go as fast as I could. And so of yeah. course the faster you go, the more you're gonna screw up. I just I ate shit completely. <laughs> but that was a a good sort of like a lesson that you can do that in front of all these people. And yeah. people aren't nobody hated me after that. Nobody looked down on I I didn't think of it that way, you know. So like yeah. even though it was sort of embarrassing, but yeah, yeah that was... but it, 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 you, you learn a lot from it. Like, I, and like, I, there was always like, dip, like this, like people that used to skate. Uh, like, I still, I still see them now in Toronto and stuff. Uh, but like, that's, I think that's a huge part of the music community too. Like, it was always there was there was punk rock was always there, and it was always accepted within the hip hop stuff as well. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I think I grew up in a pretty cool time where there was like the the a nice mix of that. You know. It was like you could, and like and I just love it now too. It's like everything is kind of accepted, and it's not just like a, like a one way street with a lot of music, you know. And I, I I'm I've always like been like prided myself on you know trying to learn as much as I possibly can from from anything like any type of music, you know. What I mean, I'm just getting into like jazz and shit now, and like some bluegrass stuff, but uh, because of like reggae and, and punk rock seemed so the marriage was it was so the union so tight, you know? Yeah. I just, uh, what people are singing about and just the, uh, you know, it, it just, it all worked for me. And, and with, uh, with, with, with punk rock and that, you know, That's I think cool. like pu- punk rock too, there was like, there was these people, um, this dude that like lived down the street. There was like this, this metalhead guy, but he was into some cool shit. And like, you know, it's just like when you're growing up, I, I was really like, just like trying to figure out what was going on, you know, and just trying to 
if you see like a band playing or something like that, I'm like, what is this? You know, it just kind of blew my mind to watch people be playing music and being able to express yourself, you know? Yeah, I think yeah. I think maybe being in Toronto, you had more of a mix even because I'm thinking about my experience and there was hip hop, but I didn't know of any hip hop shows ever. I only yeah. knew about the punk shows and... And I'm sure there had, I mean, there has to be some hip hop shows at some point, you know. Oh, for sure. I got into like uh, all this like hip hop stuff right before I got into punk rock. It was sort of like my transition was from like top 40 into punk rock. But but, so for, for my mind, I think I was definitely slower than you not realizing, hey, it's all kind of like mixed, it can mix up. Yeah. Um, But I was one of those kids that like, I didn't even like Tom Petty the first time I heard him because it wasn't punk. I only yeah, liked yeah. Black Flag. <laughs> yeah. And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but of course, later on, I, I listened to Tom Petty. I was like, this is amazing. And I'm, I was an idiot. So yeah. it happened. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of, there's some stuff. Like, you know, like when you grow up, you definitely like, I'm definitely into a lot more stuff than I was then. Uh, but yeah, like those were just like the, like I listened to like, uh, like I played bass in this band, Rules. And I was going back to like, when I, like started getting into bass and it was like it was like black flag jealous again you know and having to learn that Love you know like and i yes. and i did I, and i was doing that shit like listening to it and then being able to play like that you know what i mean mm-hmm. and it's weird how the tones sound very similar to that like that's the way i like to hear bass but i just know that you know what i mean like i can play that shit but anything else it starts getting weird it's mm-hmm. like i it's like a t- like a weird little piece of that like that i'm kind of stuck in that era when it comes to uh you know, like when punk rock and that kind of shit, like I just, I like that kind of that time, you know, because that's, I guess that's when I, I, my first initial love started with that stuff. So anything afterwards, it, it kind of like, I didn't pay as much attention. I just wanted to do a lot of like, uh, I just liked that era, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. So th- here's a fun, fun question. If you had to pick a couple records, um, like, you know, power's going out, it's going to be out for a couple months. Yeah download a few things like what are you downloading uh clash Stantonista. um you like that reg? yeah that's yeah like, and it's, it's a double it's, a, it's pretty it's long, a double right? record yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was like i'll get my money i'll Sweet. get everything yeah, yeah i'll yeah. take that one with me for sure i'm just thinking every double record i just want <laughs> um <laughs> what else barrington levy um barrington levy yeah he, he, uh, I don't even know. He, he was like he was massive for me when I was when I was a kid. It's it's just a reggae artist. Okay, uh, okay, okay. That's why. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, Eric B and Rakim, and then like any rancid record, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You know, like well, there's there a double rancid record. There's got to be. There's got to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. most of the records are like, basically double records. Yeah, they're double records. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll take that whole catalog. Yeah, I I got it. I mean, I got in them from their first record. You know, we saw them, and it was in this little tiny place in Olympia, and MXPX was just kind of getting going. You know, yeah. And so yeah, it was kind of a. I ran, a ran cover, to, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go on. No, I was just gonna say, Rancid holds a special place in my heart for for. Oh, same here, dude. Yeah, for sure. I think that was one of the bands too. I remember seeing them when I was. Fuck me, I must have been like thirteen, thirteen or fourteen something like that and it just blew my mind it was like i was just like it was the coolest shit and then like honestly that's been a huge like a huge part of my life too like just being like because because that that music opened you up to like ska reggae it was like okay you know and the clash you know Mm -hmm. like it got you 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 could it was endless you can get into you know it doesn't have to just be hardcore punk it doesn't you know it it can be you can listen to all these you know they did like some hip-hop songs too you know like it like they kind of they they did everything you know well, they still do. Like, I, I love that shit. Um, I'm trying to think of the, yeah, I think we, I think Sean and I, no, was it Sean? You know, like the the band Jersey. Oh, yeah, Jersey. You know, let's do, do yeah, Jersey, we, we, so. we, yeah. Well, we played with yeah. them but forever ago. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, but that's like, so Greg, Greg and I were at that, sh- the first show we saw Rancid in Toronto. Yeah. And that was, that was, that was a huge fucking, that was huge for us. Yeah, yeah. Greg would always put in those Rancid style breakdowns yeah know, yeah singing yeah. and playing guitar and like yeah that's yeah, yeah they were they're the great band man and yeah. like and like and greg and i still we still play today too like we still we try to get together whenever we can 
Yeah, Greg's like, a good dude. Those, those guys were so Canadian. I mean, they were yeah. Canadian. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are Canadian. <laughs> yeah. What, what were you saying? Like, hey, bud. Yeah, bud. Uh, like a, yeah, I'd like but. to know what it is. Like, the sorry thing is has got to go. Sorry. Wait, every, is, do I say it different? Sorry? Sorry, sorry. sorry. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's not that. It's not that. It's I'm actually kind of saying it like Australians do. It's like, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. But, uh. No, yeah, I mean it, the, we do say it a lot, but I'm like it's the Canadian much. accent is funny to me. It's fun. It's like <laughs> it's like you're a nice person if you're if you're speaking Canadian like that, like thick Canadian. I yeah, feel yeah. like inherently they must be a nice person, you know, because Canadians yeah, yeah. are generally <laughs> pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. We're but, pretty good people over here. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. You know? I'm not going to mention any accents that maybe are annoying to me because that would be yeah, <laughs> that would no, be no. rude. <laughs> yeah, there's no need to do that right now. No, we can talk about that when we're off this. No, right? no. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's funny. yeah, it's. Funny. I uh, I kind of I sometimes I kind of jump from like when if you're asking me a question, hopefully I'm doing all right. I don't really do a lot of these things, so no, no, you're uh, good. You're good. This yeah, is right. I like to keep it chill. Uh, I was going to say like in Washington. You know, we have those, the way we pronounce some of our words do sort of get close to Canadian, the Canadian accent. Oh, we, yeah? don't, we don't say a boat or anything or a boot, a boot, <laughs> a, boot. a boot. I say about, 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 is that how you say it? About, 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 like, about, like okay. a, like a boxing a match, like about, yeah, about, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but but they're they're you know the, if you get to the top, you go across the top of of the U.S. Um, yeah. all those top states, Minnesota, Minnesota, you know yeah, that's yeah. like that's kind of like borrowing from Canada a little bit. Okay, yeah. <laughs> or maybe Canada's borrowing from that. I don't know, but I think it's yeah. I think it's just it's the top of uh, the U.S. They all kind of like sound somewhere. a little a little. Canadian. I gotcha. I gotcha. So it, what's uh, what's it, new with you, man? Are you got, are you putting out a new record, or what are you doing? Um, we will, yeah, we're working on on new stuff right now. Um, taking technically, I'm not working on it right now because I'm in Texas, but uh, this summer I've been I've been writing tons of writing, um, yeah. trying to get get a Seems big like batch of busy, songs man. and kind of laying low and building. Um, we did so much during the pandemic, and then we did some shows and kind of did like. Um, I don't know. Do you ever do things to to like do like a fact finding mission? A lot of you know, like to figure out if something will work. Right. Uh, so we did a couple shows um, to see what we needed personally, not to see if the world was broken. Although that's a factor as well. But yeah. um, but just to see what we were missing, and and we're trying to like figure out new people for new positions that we've never even had before on our crew. That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and how we're going to pay for it that, you know, all, all of the above. So I'm right. not only in the planning stages, business wise, so yeah, it's like a kind of revamp the whole, to like you revamp the whole like situation. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It won't seem super revamped publicly. I think it'll just be like, Oh, things are rolling. Things are working rather cool. than breaking down. But, um, but yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's going well. It needs to be done. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it's, plans it's, for for you know later this year and and things like that. But yeah, um, if you uh, if you plan on doing some solo stuff, man, come up to come up to uh, to Canada. Yeah, I'll, it's been I'll, too I'll long. It's been way yeah. too long. We need to come yeah. up to Canada for sure, or I do. But I've uh, got uh, Frankie Stubbs uh, from Leatherface. He's staying with me uh, at the end of next month, uh, and I, I like we're I'm going to do a f- couple shows out here with him, uh, and then. Like I don't know, it'd be cool to have you out for that though. If you wanted to just come down, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk yeah. about it. We'll fly, fly, fly in for yeah, a show. Yeah, yeah, be sweet. Yeah, um, we'll talk about it. Yeah, figure it out. It'd be cool to have you. You know, you could do something. Yeah, yeah, it'd be nice, man. But yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to like now that everything's opened up. It's like like especially like now, there's so much, there's so much going on, dude. That's like it's hard to just like you have to book things so much like farther in advance than before. Mm-hmm. It's are just you, like every, everybody's like you know fighting for a venue. So are you back doing hosting open mic? I do that. Yeah, I do that all the time, man. I do that as much as I can when I'm home. You know. Yeah. Like, like before, I, I was touring so much before that I didn't really have the chance to do that. But it was always something that's like dear to me. I, lo- I love that. Um, I love I love being that, like like having a place where people can all express their like their songs and and just like a safe place for everyone to play. It's uh, 
means a lot to me and i've worked on it for like for years you know it's been like over six years of like hosting that and having like you know like anyone who's coming through town mm -hmm. too like they'll go up and like you know there's like nathan from flogging molly came up and he he's like he doesn't he never does like acoustic stuff and he went up and played a couple songs and like just getting like other people that come through town just to to come in and play a few songs you know yeah that's and, uh, amazing. and like and all the and all the like the, some of the talent i'm just mentioning him just because he's such a rad dude but there is, there's, it's endless, man. There's like, there's so many people that'll come through and just uh, go up and play some new songs, especially in, in Toronto too. Like there's tons of artists that just drop, drop by, you know? Um, but yeah, yeah, like, like, yeah, like I think we, the last show that we did down here, like where it was just acoustic was, uh, uh, was Chris Cresswell and then Luke from the Dirty Nil and Tally Osborne, Nubs. We did, we did a show at, uh, at Hard Luck. In, in the city and that was awesome man we, we like sold that thing out it was cool yeah that's cool you bring there. bring people together have a have a an event yeah yeah so look back to the but back to the uh open mic um oh sorry what, yeah. no i just wanted to ask like what what kind of open mic is it you know because there's like now i don't know it's almost maybe i don't know i can't speak to the differences be pre-pandemic and post-pandemic but i've definitely been to my fair share of open mics and there's there's like singer songwriter style there's ones where people are doing hip-hop and like putting up their phone uh you know plugging their phone in and like yeah rapping to beats like is it kind of just everything or I, what do you typically I, I've, done, I've done it to like it's it's do. all talent welcome it's it's I, I make it so it's like anybody that wants to go up there uh can go up so like i'll do i'll be the dj for somebody like i'll i'll get their get their beats and I'll, you know, I get them to write down what they, you know, what songs they want. And mm -hmm. then after it's just so it's like fluid, you know, so they can just get like, get used to performing, uh, that. And then I have, I bring my acoustic and someone, you know, like, like, some people bring their own stuff, but they can use mine, uh, and just go up and play singer songwriter stuff. And then if someone like a lot of like, I got some funny dudes, man, that I know and, uh, and women, uh, but they, they come through and just blow the spot up, just telling jokes. And a lot of people, and like, there's some people that just want to go up and they're just starting out, you know? Um, and that's like very important for me to like, to be the, I, I like being the person there to like, to regulate and see what, what people are like, you know, if someone's being rude or someone's, you know, like not supporting the night. I like to, I like to be able to, you know, tell these people to leave. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, like if, if I feel like there's some stuff is like, you know, if you're saying something that's just like, you know, there's some people think they're funny and they're not. You know, you're, you're just being rude, you know, or you're just being like offensive to somebody or, you know, you're, you're being racist or something like that. There's no room for that where we're, where we're at, you know? So like, I make sure that everybody knows that shit too, before they go up. I've only had to kick out like two people in six years or something, but you know, it does happen, but I like, being, I like being there to like, to, to kind of like, you know, oversee, oversee everything and then make sure that people that are, when people are going up, that it's a safe place for people to perform and to open up and to be able to share their their songs or, or their jokes or whatever they want to do. Like someone went up and just read poetry for, you know, for like 10 minutes. And I was like, this is like, that's fucking awesome to me uh, that, you know, and then some people are, you know, th that's not everybody's thing, but everyone in the room knows that they're there to support that, you know? And I, I let everybody know that as well. Yeah. Just to make sure that they know what they're, you know, that this is the, the place that this happens, you know, some, sometimes people like bovine sex club, you think a lot of people are like, they just think it's just like full of fucking and shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is <laughs> so it? Like, it's like, what's not. What's going on, man? Like, yeah, what's happening here? Yeah. But uh, you know, it's uh, yeah. Daryl's been really cool with giving me a, a chance, like over the years, just to to create a safe place for people to perform, you know. Uh, and then that's just like you know, obviously, like on the weekends and stuff. There's shows like every single night of the week, but Sundays have been my uh, been the day where I get to uh, where I get to do that. And you, it's been nice yeah. lately, man. Like some lot a lot of like. A lot of performers are, because of the the long time that we had off. It's really nice to see. There's some really heartfelt stuff coming out, man, and some and some people that are really, uh, you know, really really digging into like letting people know that it's, like it's, it feels like it's like their first time doing it, but they're they're not as shy, you know, and like they just kind of want to get out there and just and and perform. So it's yeah. nice. Yeah. What I love about open mics is is for for any professionals that do it, it's a great place to practice, sort of there's no pressure but for non-professionals people that have you know a regular life and uh just like to do music and just need an outlet for it you know and, and yeah nobody's gonna put them on the show necessarily but they're great like not all of them are great there's some terrible people but like 
I'm blown away a lot of times seeing just any random open mic, just seeing some yeah. random person that you, you nobody's ever heard of, and it's like that's a good song, you know. Even totally. if they're even if they're like just covering a song and they're like doing it in a kind of a style that I couldn't do myself. Yeah, you know, I, I get impressed by that. So like open mics have a, a multiple service yeah. for sure, it, and, and it does for sure. And like it's a community, man. Like I've I've put together at least six bands over the years. You know, of like, you know, just of, you should talk with this person or you should, you know, and trying to get people to uh, to get together like that. Uh, and I've also seen like it, it's it's pretty like there's a girl, Ruby Waters, that used to come in all the time. I always remember teaching her chords. And then now she's she's like touring with City and Color. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like it's like it's cool. Like especially wow. like in, in Toronto, like, you know, the bovine is our um, that's our CBGBs, you know, like that's our like that's Toronto's CBGBs. Like that's like that's the place you go. You know, in the city, if you want to, uh, you know, for punk rock and just kind of like counterculture stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been pretty fortunate, man, to see some amazing performers and like kind of help them through, uh, like help some people, like you know, just give them confidence. You know, the same way I needed it. You know what I mean? I still do sometimes. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, like we all do. You know. But absolutely, it's it's been uh, it's been it's a cool spot. Like, and then just to build the community, like everybody's friends, you know, and everyone kind of supports each other, and we're just trying to make that the spot. I feel this like is I Taco. Should, hey, Taco. I feel like I should wake this girl up. You got that? Yeah. Okay, Taco. Cats and dogs. Yeah, man. Together as one. Oh, shit. <laughs> Taco took it out. She's like, what? <laughs> What's going on? What's that dog's name? Oh, I love that. Ruby Sue. Nice. Fuck yeah. Hey, Ruby. What up, Ruby? Yeah. I'll take a picture of her. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> There you go. Uh, three. <laughs> Sorry, baby. Woke her up. She was just sleeping right next to me the whole time. Yeah, man. So how did you? Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, how did you get into punk rock? You know, I, um, my cousin and my sister. My cousin was more into punk rock. Like she was into Rollins Band and stuff like that. Um, and I was into skateboarding, so I got into skateboarding in fifth grade. So yeah. early on, and I, I, it's funny because I wanted to listen to music that fit with skateboarding. So I sought out thrash music, skate music, yeah, and I yeah, found yeah. suicidal tendencies. Sick. And so I got into them, had like um, Camera Lights Revolution was the album I had. Right. Um, and it's got like suicidal army. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. It, it was like, whoa, this is awesome. Like, I thought is it was it awesome. Is it kind of weird that, like, if you, like, that's how you first got into that? And then you, now that you're, like, that, like, just, like, the making these, like, pop classics, you know, <laughs> going, going from that to doing, to doing, like, like, Suicidal Army to that, dude? So, yeah, wow. I mean, I think my songwriting, I grew up listening to the Beatles all the time. And so listening to the Beatles put this thing in my brain that I can't really ever get out, which is like melody and hook yeah. and, and even like left turn sometimes, sometimes I do things that like most people aren't into. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I think it's cool though, man. It's like, that's what gives it its own. Like it's, it's different, you know? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I appreciate it. Yeah. I think Beatles and, and, but, but when I, I got into punk rock, I wanted to, um, my buddy Don K I was hanging out with him. He liked Metallica. He liked um, all these kind of metal bands, Guns yeah. N' Roses for sure. So like I was listening to that stuff with him. And then one day he showed me um, Ramones and Sus uh, and Social Distortion. So nice. those two albums. And once I like, okay, this is, what is this? This is punk? Okay, cool. And then I got into like The Descendants right after that. The Descendants. Oh, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and perfect. I didn't know anything about any of these bands like like I do now. So it was all just like from cassettes and listening to my friends' tapes and stuff like that. Yeah. So I did. I, I think when, like, when you're saying the metal stuff, I think the first the first concert I ever saw was Pantera, Sepultura, and Biohazard. That's that was pretty, like the. That's, that's pretty a pretty tough, good line. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that, so that was my first, I think that was like, the, that's the first show that I ever saw. And I remember I came home with a weed leaf hat and I remember my, my dad going like, what the fuck's that? And I was like, I was like, what are you talking about? It's weed. Like, and, like, <laughs> and, 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 and then my, uh, and my, 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 uh, my uncle, he's like, he's like, he's on the right path. And he's like, he brings over and he, he pulls up his shirt and he's like, look at this. And it's Garfield doing hot knives. You got it. You got it. You had a, 
tattoo a Garfield doing hot knives. So oh, I think wow. like that was like so it wasn't like that. I, I still think like you know it's not punk necessarily, but it's definitely thrash, you know. But like that was my first show. Yeah, and I then mean, and then got into some other shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah my first show um, was. U2, really, my first big show was U2 on the cool. Zoo TV tour. And, and I was a fan. I, you know, it was like, but then yeah. I still got into punk. Like, so, like, I didn't realize you can't be into U2 if you like punk you know, or whatever. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can now, but at yeah, the yeah. time, I didn't, I yeah, didn't that, know that. that, that. But, uh, I, but I, my parents, like, brought, you know, took me to the show and everything. And, and, uh, but yeah, the real, like, first, punk show i saw was in a garage like i started going to bad you know bad juju con uh practices down the street with friends of mine and they yeah. kind of sounded like bad religion minutemen like a mix-up between that oh sick That's and cool. uh really really amazing like i was blown away and so after that i realized okay i gotta i gotta start my own band yeah I, I was already like trying to sing for like my buddies when they were like playing nonsense yeah but i was like i i kind of like that's where i really took things in matters into my own hands and started yeah. writing, you know, learning to play, write songs, all of that. That was basically junior high, just most yeah, of, you sure. know, throughout junior high. Yeah. I, yeah. Like it, it's, it's crazy how, like how, like what it, you know, all the different uh, experiences that lead you to where you're, where you're at, you know, like I, I remember seeing uh, the queers and, and a band called DBS that was from Vancouver, but I, I must've been, I was super young then, but it was in the back of Rotate This in Toronto, in the back of this record store, mm. and seeing I I love I love the Queers and I love the, it was like, it was like Bugatta 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 that record by uh, Screeching Weasel, and I'm I'm like oh, okay. I always thought that they were kind of in the same thing, that, and, and like that I was into that punk or something, you know, at that time. Yeah, it's interesting you said Bugatta Bugatta Bugatta. Isn't that what it because is? Because I always said Bugatta Bugatta Bugatta. Oh yeah. So I don't know it. That's, should... that's the that's the Canadian version. Can we call? Let's call. <laughs> call, yeah, ben. call Ben. Call Ben and see. Uh, yeah. Are, are you gonna answer? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't it, know if it's if it's that or not, man. I probably sound like an idiot, but I. I uh, Bugatta. Yeah. It's like that's <laughs> yeah. fancier. It's like yeah, like Bugatta. Bugatta. Yeah. Bugatta, Bugatta. <laughs> yeah. It's like a fashion brand. Yeah. Um, I always thought in, it was so like you're... Bugatta, like uh, the boogeyman no, kind of. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe that's what it is. Huh. Yeah. We'll find out. We'll, we'll get, yeah, I'll get back I, I'm to pretty you. sure you're right. Um, the I was gonna say, yeah, I think uh, Comeback Kid and Alexa on Fire is in Texas tonight, aren't they? Are they? I'm I pretty need to sure check they it are. Out. Okay, yeah, I'll, should, I'll, I'll should, look it up. Yeah, you. I, I'm pretty sure that they're they're out there, or no, it's tomorrow. I think tomorrow. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's in Texas, but yeah, if that'd that's be better. Man, you should go check it out. That'd be better than tonight. Yeah, dude. Cool. Well, yeah. Well, like, thanks for having me, man. I got to run off to work. Yeah, of course, um, so, of course. Thanks for yeah, doing it. I, yeah, I really appreciate it, though. It's uh, I don't do these often, so hopefully it went all right. Dude, yeah. you're great. Uh, where can people so, find you online? What What are you working on that you want people to see? Is there anything? Obviously, the the latest Creep Show record. Go go find uh, the, it. Yeah, that one. That so that's we've like we have a new record that's coming out. A uh, new a singles coming out pretty soon. Uh, and for right now, uh, a band called Rules, and it's on Stomp Records. Um, but yeah, it's just called rules and it's called the bummer circus comes to truth city. That's the name of the record. Nice. Uh, and that's, that's the latest project. And we'll, we'll be, we'll be playing as much as we can, like, uh, in the, within the year. And I started a new, a new project called mall cops, M A U L cops. Uh, and that's going to be, uh, that's just like, like that project will probably within the next month, I'll have like two or three songs out. Right. Okay. But cool. yeah. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. I'll, I'll send it to you as soon as I have it too. But those are, those are like the the three things I'm doing right now. Dope. But yeah, man. Dude, good well, to catch so up. Thanks so much, dude. Yeah. yeah, dude. I appreciate it, man. Thanks so much, dude. Thank you. Okay, okay, man. I'll talk to you a bit. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.